Hello and good morning. Well, I'm sure in all of our lives there have been times when we have upset or hurt people that we love, usually by accident or by careless thinking. And because we love them, we want to make it up to them and say sorry. So we might do that by um, having some chocolates, giving them some chocolates or some flowers, or trying to spend some time and fix the thing that we have broken. But these are actually just symbols, aren't they, to show that we are sorry. The chocolates, tasty as they are, don't actually contain sorrow within them. And in fact, if just offered by themselves, they are meaningless. The true act of saying sorry requires a heartfelt apology. And so if the chocolates don't come with a heartfelt apology, they're worth nothing. Now, in our journey of looking through the Gospel of John, we are looking at pictures or symbols that John uses to describe Jesus. And we've seen that pictures that he uses, such as bread or light, help us understand a little bit of who Jesus was and why he did what he did. Now, in the first chapter of the book of John, the author, John, is telling us about another man called John, uh, who is John the Baptist. And we're going to read about John the Baptist today and learn a bit about the first time that he publicly met Jesus, or as it's recorded in the Bible, at least. Now, John the Baptist's key role was to prepare the way for Jesus, to announce Jesus, to make sure that people understood who Jesus was when Jesus came. So this is a really important event, the first time or first recorded time when John the Baptist meets Jesus. So what's he going to say? How is he going to announce Jesus? Well, we find out in this passage that John the Baptist says, look, the Lamb of God. That's quite a bizarre way of introducing someone, isn't it? I mean, imagine if Keith had introduced me today as Graham, the Lamb. What would you think? Would you think of a small and fluffy animal like my daughter's toy lamb here? Uh, would you think of a stinky, smelly farmyard animal? That's the way my son thought about lambs. Or would you think that I'd be good with mint sauce? Well, it's a bit strange, isn't it? But for the people who were listening to John the Baptist at that time, they would understand immediately the reference to lamb and what that signified to them. Because John says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, they would have understood that lambs are animals that were sacrificed as an offering to God to say sorry for their sin. Okay, Lambs were sacrifices uh, as a way of saying sorry for their own sin. It's pretty gruesome stuff, actually. Uh, but the Old Testament, uh, which is what the Jewish people had at that time as their holy scriptures, the Old Testament talks a lot about lambs and uh, lambs being used in that way as sacrifices. Now, maybe you remember the story in Genesis 22, where Abraham takes his only son Isaac to sacrifice him to God. And Isaac asks, well, where is the lamb to be sacrificed? And Abraham answers, well, God himself will provide the lamb. Unfortunately, Isaac himself is not sacrificed, uh, but a, a, a lamb, well, a ram actually is found and is sacrificed instead. And maybe you know the story in Exodus 12, where Pharaoh in Egypt is not freeing God's people from slavery. And God sent various plagues upon Egypt. And the final one of which was that the firstborns would be killed. Now, God's people wouldn't get that plague, that punishment. God's people were instructed to sacrifice a lamb and put its blood 
on the doorposts of their houses. And because that lamb's blood had been shed, God's people were saved from this, from this plague. They, their firstborns weren't killed. And then uh, Pharaoh eventually freed God's people out of slavery and they escaped from Egypt. And, and that event uh, is known as Passover. Maybe you're aware of that. Uh, the lamb that was sacrificed and the, then death passed over their houses and uh, their firstborns weren't killed. And that Passover meal is still celebrated in Jewish households, even today, to commemorate that event, uh, that the lamb had to die in order for ultimately the people to be free from slavery. And at CBC, in previous years, we've been able to celebrate that Passover meal together, and Mandy has led us through the significance of what that event uh, means. And then going on in the Old Testament, there are laws that you can find in Leviticus 4 and 5, for example, that said that a lamb is a necessary sacrifice for sin. For an ordinary person, they are to sacrifice a lamb as a, a way of offering to God uh, to say sorry for their sin, to atone for their sin. So now, Let's come forward back to the Gospel of John in the New Testament. And John the Baptist is heralding an amazing thing, something so exciting that he's announcing this fact every day, that here is Jesus Christ. And Jesus is going to be a new lamb who will take away the sins of the world. The lamb that will take away the sins of the world, he announces. And so the people there would recognise that this is a lamb who is going to be sacrificed. Now, sacrificing a, a regular lamb was a temporary thing. This sacrifice had to happen time and time again. But Jesus Christ was coming to sacrifice himself to atone for sins, for their sins, for our sins as well. Once, one time, for all, for everybody. He is the new Passover lamb who dies so that we don't have to, or we don't have to sacrifice lambs anymore. And he sets us free from that slavery of sin that we're in. He's the new lamb that God provides. Just as Abraham is set to sacrifice his only son, well, God the Father sacrifices his only son, Jesus. So Jesus died on the cross. It's the heart of the Christian message as the sacrifice for our sin. Just after he himself had celebrated the Passover meal commemoration. And in fact, we now call it the Last Supper. And the references to lamb don't stop there in the Bible. So in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7, Jesus is called the sacrificed Passover lamb. And in the final book of the Bible, in Revelation, Revelation is full of references to Jesus as the lamb, the lamb who was slain, who was sacrificed, and uh, the blood uh, that was shed means that people from every tribe and language and nation are now purchased for, for God. They've been redeemed, they've been saved. And this lamb, Jesus, is now due all praise and honour and glory and power. So the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is full of the importance of the lamb as a sacrifice. And Jesus is described as the lamb. So what does that mean then? What does that mean for us when he's described as a lamb? Well, we learn that there's a way out from our sin, from the wrong things that we've done, there's a way out and a way to be restored to God, to having a relationship with him again. Because God's perfect, God's holy, um, and he can't accept us in our sinful selves. But when we have decided that Jesus would come into our lives and we accept him as our saviour, we accept him as our lamb, then that makes us right with God again. 
So through Jesus' death, through his blood being shed as a sacrifice, we're rescued from our sin and its eternal punishment. And we're now in a restored relationship with God and we have eternal life with him. Eternal life being the new heaven, the new earth, where the old rotten things are wiped away and nothing impure will ever enter this new eternal life. Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, this is uh, what Revelation says, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So let's be written in the Lamb's book of life, in Jesus' book of life. While we're on earth, while we're living this life here, let's not forget that even if we call ourselves Christians, it's still so easy to sin, to do wrong things, isn't it? to live for ourselves, to live against God even sometimes, to say, well, I'm going to live by my rules in in this area of my life and that area of my life, not I live by God's rules. It's really tough, isn't it? Even though Jesus has died as a sacrificial lamb for us, and even if we choose to follow him, it doesn't mean we won't sin while we're here on earth. But it means that we have a way out, that we can go to God, we can ask for forgiveness. And because of what Jesus has done, uh, we have that restoration of relationship with God. So that demands repentance from us, doesn't it? That demands true repentance, a true heartfelt apology. Don't offer up chocolates and flowers to God. Um, but offer up a true heartfelt apology that you are so annoyed and sad at what you have done, but that you are so grateful and thankful to Jesus being a sacrificed lamb, meaning that that relationship with God is restored. 1 John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. And that applies even to that big, enormous sin that you think nobody can forgive. Maybe nobody knows about it either. It applies to that as well. God can forgive. So the challenge for us today is, where is your sin? Where is my sin? Our sin is either still with us, still on us, or it's on him, it's on Jesus. It doesn't have to stay with you. If you confess your sin to God and thank him that Jesus, his son, died as a sacrificial lamb, your sins are no longer on you. They're no longer relevant to who you are. You're free, you're forgiven. They are on him and he'll take them. He'll take those sins. So where are your sins? Are they still on you or have you given them to him? Father God, we are so thankful that you are the lamb who takes away our sins. Lord, we are so sorry for the fact that we live by our own rules and not by yours. Help us to live in the way that you would want us to live. And thank you that you have provided a way out, a restoration of our relationship with you through Jesus, our Lamb. Amen.